dear participants welcome back to the short term course power converters for green energy and ev integration 2024 now the present session will be addressed by professor orijit guha nit raurkela on the topic online health monitoring of rechargeable batteries based on artificial neural networks let me introduce dr orijit guha to you all dr orijit guha received the phd degree in electrical engineering in the branch of control system from the indian institute of technology kharagpur in 2018 he is currently working as an assistant professor in the department of electrical engineering at national institute of technology raurkela odisha prior to that he has worked as a senior r&d engineer at abb global industries and services private limited bangalore in the industrial automation digital division and as a consultant at samsung research institute bangalore in the mobile battery research division from to august 2018 to may 2020 His current research interest include system identification, parameter and state estimation, fault diagnostics, prognostics, battery management systems, electric vehicle, etc. Now I request Dr. Orijit Guha sir to address all the participants. Over to you, sir. हेलो 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 पॉइंटर है पॉइंटर चेंज करो नहीं इधर इधर तो ये चेंज करो ओके गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक्स फॉर नाइस इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट माई सेल्फ तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक प्रोफेसर इंद्रजीत सरकार एंड डॉक्टर अर्नब घोष फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू टॉक इन दिस शॉर्ट टर्म कोर्स कम फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम सो टुडे आई विल बी टॉकिंग ऑन दिस टॉपिक व्हिच इज रिटन हियर दिस हेलो ओके सो सो द टॉपिक दैट आई वुड बी प्रेजेंटिंग टुडे इज मिशन लर्निंग बेस्ड ऑनलाइन हेल्थ मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ रिचार्जेबल बैटरीज सो हियर द एप्लीकेशन इज रिचार्जेबल बैटरी सो हियर दिस इज ए लाइक सो हियर द बैटरी दैट हैज बीन कंसिडर्ड हियर इट इज लाइक we can actually charge and discharge it repeatedly multiple number of times uh, so that is the application and main aspect is about health monitoring of the rechargeable battery and here we have uh, 
used a machine learning algorithm which is uh, based on the artificial neural network which is actually very common and so i will show you that although some like like some part of the work is still ongoing so whatever we have achieved here so till now so that i will present here with some uh, results before that i would like to just uh, speak about a brief introduction and after that we will go to the actual problem okay so first let me introduce you like so here we can see that lithium ion batteries are nowadays uh, very much popular among uh, various applications ranging from portable electronics to automotive applications as well as uh, like other high end applications maybe in uh, aerospace applications also okay so here we can say that so there are different kinds of like in this category also in automotive industries there are various uh, like uh, like electric vehicles hybrid electric vehicles plug in hybrid electric vehicles okay so in all these kind of uh, applications so to drive the power train so battery is very much important that's why actually the demand of lithium ion batteries has increased many fold over the last few decades and it actually offers some of the uh, the advantages which compared to the other kinds of uh, battery chemistries which are available in the market uh, like lead acid nickel cadmium nickel metal hydride so some of the uh, advantages has been listed here so first is the longer cycle life that means actually if we want to uh, like use the battery like by after actually it is like used for a longer time span uh, like by doing repeated charging discharging so we are we would be able to use it for a longer time span compared to other kinds of battery chemistries which are available commercially apart from that it offers high energy density which is very much important in the context of electric vehicles so here uh, because the battery is an integral part of electric vehicle and and because lithium ion actually it has it has the highest energy density compared to other chemistries so it will have a very compact size so that it can accommodate in an electric vehicle and also it has the uh, property of lower self discharge rate that has been mentioned here so it is like if you like charge a battery and if you actually don't connect a load across it so if you keep it idle so some part of the charge will be drained still uh, by actually side reaction mechanisms which is always there inside a battery so because of that some part, some portion of the charge which is stored there it will drain but it is actually not that much like in case of lithium ion it may be one or two percent like if you fully charge the battery to 100 percent it may happen that if even if you keep the battery idle for some for few hours so it may happen that the capacity the state of charge of the battery may actually reduce to 98 percent or 99 percent okay but compared to other chemistries it is much much lower okay and also it has like a very lower uh, memory effect okay that is another property of like wh what advantage it offers over other kinds of chemistries now here uh, different types of lithium ion batteries which are currently available uh, commercially that i have just put here so first you can see that it is the coin cell which is actually there like which will be there in smart watches or in some low power applications so cr2032 is actually very uh, like popular variant so now uh, the cylindrical cell that you can see here so very popular name is 18650 26650 is also there okay so this kind of cylindrical cells uh, actually can have 2.6 ampere hours to uh, to actually 3000 uh, uh, like 3 ampere hour or maybe 3.5 ampere hour capacity and this cells actually like uh, if if you see a electric vehicle battery pack so where if you actually connect the cylindrical cells like many such cylindrical cells in series parallel combinations so we can actually form battery modules as well as we, we can also from battery packs depending on the capacity rating and voltage rating uh, what actually is required okay 
Apart from that, pouch cells are also available. So very common variant is A123. Okay, so with that also, it is possible to make battery packs. And in our mobile phones, normally the pouch cells, this kind of cells actually you can see. Okay, other type of variant, it can be like prismatic cells, uh, which has been shown here. Okay, and like these cylindrical cells are very common. Okay, so even actually I I also have used this and also the coin cells and also the pouch cells. So the cylindrical cells uh, actually different manufacturers are there like Samsung, Panasonic, LG. Actually. So uh, various manufacturers you will get which actually manufacture this kind of cells. Now coming to the like before we go uh, deep into the problem. So first you need to understand that what can be the possible failure modes in a battery uh, based on the basic battery operation which actually involves charging and discharging so here this is a these are two diagrams that has been given one for the charging phase another for the discharging phase so here in the charging phase what happens uh, so typically a battery will have two electrodes cathode and anode so here the positive electrode is the cathode and here this is the anode negative electrode uh, so this pointer is not working otherwise i would have shown you here so here this is the positive electrode that has been considered so uh, the electrode that has been considered here it is the so here you can see that this is actually a lithium cobalt oxide cathode that has been used here apart from that different other uh, variants are also possible like lithium iron phosphate which is also very popular lithium manganese dioxide is also there and the negative electrode that is the anode it is mostly made of some graphite compound okay so here i have just put one equation this is actually the redox reaction uh, which involves oxidation reduction uh, so that you can see so what happens that when the battery is in the charging phase so the so these are now now uh, another thing i actually missed that here the electrodes they are actually connected to the external circuit through actually current collectors so here with the cathode there is a aluminum current collector and with the anode there is a copper current collector okay so now uh, here what happens during the charging phase lithium plus ions you can see they actually move from the cathode to the anode side and through actually a layer which is actually called a separating layer okay so this is typically called a separator and it is actually designed in such a way that it electrically isolates the two electrodes so that actually there is no short circuit in between okay so like passage of electrons through this path it is actually like restricted because if there is passive electrons so there will be short circuit so here it is just for understanding purpose i have given that the, if this is the flow of current okay and this is actually the in the opposite direction electron flows okay so current is actually flowing in the external circuit now here inside the cell the conduction is happening in terms of the lithium ions okay li plus so they are moving and they are reduced here and they become li here and because there is actually electrolyte everywhere so this is here this cell that has been shown here it is having liquid electrolyte which is actually made of some lithium salt so now because there is there are two interfacing layers between the two electrodes and the electrolyte so basically there are two interfacing layers which forms uh, one one interfacing layer between the electrolyte and the cathode another interfacing layer between the anode and the electrolyte so charge is basically stored in that interfacing layer okay and therefore due to this mechanism because there are two interfacing layers so there is a double layer capacitive effect which comes inside a lithium ion battery now uh, what happens that when the lithium ions actually like penetrate like through the separator from the cathode to the anode so due to gradual like like if you repeatedly charge the battery discharge the battery what happens like as so so this is actually the discharging phase that has been shown here okay so here instead of a charger there is a load connected okay so that the movement of the lithium ions will be in the opposite direction okay now due to this mechanism repeated mechanism what happens on the layer of the anode surface there will be like decomposition of active material from the electrode 
and also so, so there will be repeatedly breakdown of active material and there will be deposition of layers on the anode surface which is typically known in, in the literature as solid electrolyte interface layer which is abbreviated as SEI okay and this contributes to almost 90 percent of the battery degradation okay there are also other degradation mechanisms which are there in a lithium ion battery and some degradation happens at low temperatures okay so that kind of a degradation is called plating mechanism okay but here we are talking about the SEI which is which contributes to the major part of the degradation because of the formation of the ACI layer on the anode surface so what happens that like if so they it will actually offer a restriction to the passage of lithium ions when it moves from the cathode to the anode okay so so the lithium ions will face obstruction from due to the ACI layer and here so so because of the internal resistance so every battery will have some internal resistance within it and because of the deposition of the ACL layer on the anode surface there will be an extra resistance due to the ACL layer okay so that I will show you at the later part of the presentation so because of that actually the overall internal impedance of the battery cell it will increase okay now battery is a uh, charge storing device okay so typically it can be realized by RC networks okay if you actually consider electrical equivalent models so because capacitive nature is there like it is storing energy like it is storing the charge at the interfacing layer of the cathode uh, cathode and the electrolyte as well as the anode and the electrolyte okay so very much like uh, similar to a capacitance capacitor where actually we have we have two plates in between there is a dielectric okay so now because of this ACL layer formation, the overall impedance of the battery will gradually rise and that is actually a sign of degradation, okay? So number of lithium ions which can participate for the energy, for the charge storing within the cell that will gradually reduce due to the obstruction it faces due to the deposition of ACL layer, okay? So now there, here I have just listed down some of the internal and external factors of degradation, okay? So, so here first point is written, it is that internal short circuit due to dendrite growth okay so internal short circuit will happen if there is a formation of dendrite okay what is a dendrite dendrite is something like if there is if there is breakdown of lithium active active material and if there is deposition of like metallic lithium on the anode surface so that gradually will form like a crystalline structure and gradually it will try to penetrate the separator and due to that what will happen the there will be a short circuit between the cathode and the anode okay and due to that there there can be a short circuit uh, internal short circuit and which may eventually uh, result in a catastrophe by like after the battery is like short circuited and it may catch fire also okay now there can be chemical breakdown of electrode materials okay due to these hard reactions that already i told and temperature actually plays a very important role here okay so the separator material it can actually shrink okay due to very high temperature also uh, there can be electrolyte breakdown there can be other possible cases like the external factors like if you overcharge a battery okay if you actually keep the battery uh, charging throughout the night okay overnight so that actually like even if the battery is fully charged you are forcefully you are uh, like uh, applying the charge so to, to the battery so due to the overcharging mechanism the battery life may reduce okay also deep discharging can also like reduce the battery life okay also abnormal charging discharging can also reduce the battery life another important factor is vibration or shock okay what happens like if you have an electric vehicle and there is battery pack mounted in it suppose it crashes it crashes with a hard object so due to that like high impact there can be a possibility the battery due to this so some shock will be generated shock wave will be generated due to that vibration the battery uh, normal functionalities actually can deteriorate okay so that can be another external factor also increase and decrease of ambient temperature 
because ambient temperature actually plays a big role uh, like if you want to get a like it, it plays a big role in the battery behavior in the long run okay so ambient temperature like in cold countries it is below sub zero temperatures in like uh, tropical climates it is actually sometimes it is too hot sometimes it will be humid okay okay so all these factors actually can contribute to the battery degradation and that actually can eventually lead to some possible failure modes okay now this is actually a uh, graph which is shown here which is a simple charge discharge uh, cycle current and voltage plot so here if you see uh, this this side actually it is having two y axis this side it is the terminal voltage this is the current okay and here it is time now first part actually i have shown here this is actually called a probe cycle okay so probe cycle is such kind of a cycle like like probe cycle is actually defined in such a way that if you apply every small amount of current like suppose the battery has a rated current okay depending on the rated capacity suppose a battery is having x ampere hour capacity and so the rated rated current actually at which it can be charged which is actually 1c rate is x amperes now this probe cycle current you can actually choose maybe fifth like one fifth or one sixth of the rated current okay so it is actually a like lower magnitude current you can actually see here so this is actually probe cycle current this part and here this part is the normal charging current okay so that's why it is mentioned here okay so this is the normal charge discharge uh, cycle and this is a probe cycle so probe cycles are generally used to study some of the characteristics of the battery or actually if you want to see some variation in the parameters of the battery internal parameters of the battery that time actually we can apply some probe cycle okay so here you can see that it is having a so here this is actually a constant current phase okay so in the constant current phase you can see that as you apply a constant current so the battery voltage will gradually rise and it will actually reach to this maximum limit so here the battery that has been considered here it is around it is having 4.4 volt max voltage okay beyond that we cannot actually increase the voltage so then around that point where it, it reaches the 4.4 volt this limit the battery is almost it is like 70% uh, charged okay after that uh, the uh, another phase starts which is typically known as this this part it is called a constant voltage mode charging okay so constant voltage mode charging actually is like the span of the charging time it will be much much longer here due to lack of space i have not shown here okay so this will continue this curve kind of a thing you can see it will continue till the current reaches maybe around five six percent of the rated current okay so five six percent is much much less okay so till the time the this charging process it will continue okay so this voltage like will be maintained constant the at at the max voltage which is here 4.4 and the current will keep on decreasing okay and here uh, in order to accommodate everything in the same graph that's why actually i have cut short the constant voltage mode part okay that actually you can see there are actually various cross references from there you can check now this phase is called the discharging phase okay so where the battery is discharged and this is a constant current discharge so from this point where suppose we assume that here the battery is fully charged okay from that point onwards the due to the application of this constant current gradually the voltage will drop and it will the pattern actually will look like this okay and this typically it will look also like it will look similar in the normal charging discharging so basically what i am explaining now this is for this part okay because this part has been like this part is like enlarged that's why i am explaining from here but whatever explanation i give that is actually for this part now probe cycle current is a lower magnitude current it will also follow the same pattern okay that's why we can explain from this graph so here this is the normal charging graph so this is this is actually used for uh, the state of health estimation okay so that we will uh, discuss later here the probe cycle the probe cycle discharge 
whatever actually has been shown here, it is actually used for target SOH estimation. Okay. So what is target SOH that we'll discuss after a few slides. Now, uh, so this is actually all about a normal charging discharging procedure. Now, these are the key battery attributes. Okay, so state of charge actually, like everyone nowadays have a smartphone. Okay, so uh, smartphone ranging from gadgets, uh, laptops, okay, wh wherever actually you see, it will actually show the state of charge. It is basically act like a fuel gauge. Okay, so how much charge it is storing, like remaining capacity to the max capacity or the nominal capacity that actually has been shown here. And Usually this quantity, it is not measurable. Okay. Only measurable quantities in a battery are current voltage and temperature. Okay. Apart from this, nothing can be measurable. So this is basically a derived quantity. Okay. If you know the current and the timestamp information is there, you can actually integrate current over time. And then actually you can take a ratio with respect to the max capacity or here it has been mentioned as total capacity that will give you a ratio between 0 to 100 percent so if the battery is at like fully charged so the state of charge will be 100 percent which actually you can see from this figure this battery is fully charged it is having 100 percent soc this battery is 50 percent charged it is having 50 percent soc and it is even less this this battery is fully drained okay so here typically the state of charge is zero okay now in in percentage wise you can express from zero to hundred percent and if you actually just write the ratio form so it will be from zero to one okay so state of health is another important attribute which is actually like for a longer time span okay so like state of charge is defined for one particular cycle like one full charging, one full discharging. Okay. That during that range, state of charge can be defined. State of health. Okay. It is actually defined for a longer time span. Like if you repeatedly charge and discharge the battery for say two months, five months, okay, eight months, one year, gradually the battery state of health will reduce. Okay. Max cap, max state of health will be when it is at the new condition. Okay. And whenever, like, suppose if you think about, like, if you purchase a phone today, now if you actually fully charge the battery, that battery will give you, say, for example, a backup of 10 hours, 12 hours. Now, if that same phone you are using for two years, that battery will not give you a backup of 10 hours. Okay. So it will reduce to four or five hours. Okay. So why actually this is happening? This is happening due to a reduction of the state of health of the battery. Okay. Even if you fully charge the battery, it is actually not going to deliver you that much uh, power, okay, which is expected. Okay, so therefore the time span which it can deliver, so that will gradually reduce because of the reduction in the state of health. And that state of health reduction has happened due to the recurrent uh, way of degradation which is happening inside a battery due to side reactions, due to formation of solid electrolyte interface layer that I have shown you or maybe some other causes like there is another mechanism called lithium plating which happens at low temperatures usually actually in low like uh, like cold countries they, there actually it might be a possibility that lithium plating can happen more often it happens at low temperature high soc condition okay so now here the state of health can be actually defined in terms of various parameters so capacity ampere hour capacity can be actually one such parameter this one it can be also defined in terms of internal resistance. Okay. So internal resistance at the new condition, it is whatever may be the internal resistance. After you have cycled the battery for 100 cycles or 200 cycles, gradually the internal resistance will rise. Okay. So it will be actually more when it is. So here BOL, BOL that I've written here, it is actually denotes beginning of life. Okay. That is at new condition. So this is actually the capacity with respect to the beginning of life when it is at new condition. So here also it is resistance by resistance uh, at BOL. This is actually in terms of power fading. Okay, so power fading mechanism. So now uh, some of the like there are actually some shortcomings like which actually like based on the literature that has been studied and it has been seen that like because here we have also used a machine learning algorithm so that 
because of that this training and testing it is part of it okay so that actually we need to know so some algorithms are there which can which can actually estimate the state of charge for the same range of values for which the training has been performed okay so if you actually like change it so that will not work okay there are certain algorithms also full like complete charging discharging of battery data may be actually required okay like here i will show you some some uh, case studies where complete charging and discharging data is not required okay with partial charging discharging like like if you actually have like like partial like uh, maybe initial 400 cycles of data that we have used here okay that is actually enough to actually form to, to actually train the model that has been used here okay which is which is the neural network model okay that i will show you up in the upcoming slides also actually it may happen that the battery can be fully charged like the battery can be normally uh, like the normal charging and discharging it may actually have in a partial way okay now what happens that if you actually like in normal cases battery if you even if you fully charge it so always we do not actually drain it to uh, to zero percent okay so even if you fully charge the battery we use it say up to like when the battery has reached to 20 30 percent state of charge again we charge it okay so it may be a scenario so normally we don't actually go up to zero okay very rarely it happens okay or otherwise it may also happen that battery is like whatever whatever like it is it is not it has not reached zero it is around 20 30 percent still we again charge it and always we may not actually charge it to 100 percent okay it may be 90 percent then we actually plug out the charger okay so now uh, there are also some algorithms where like you actually need cycle numbers to estimate the parameters of the soh okay also it may be possible that the uh, so so the state of health calculations it actually greatly depends on the accuracy of the model parameters now inside a battery management system there is a there has to be a battery model now how accurate it is based on that only your estimate of state of health it depends okay so if it is not accurate enough okay then actually you will not get a very good estimate of the state of health so it will actually it may happen that it may give you some erroneous results okay so uh, and most of the cases uh, it has been reported that for offline estimation of state of health you will get many many such methods okay which are which are readily available now for online estimation very few methods like you will get okay so here we have proposed one such method which can be actually used for online state of health estimation okay so that eventually we'll see now what is the novelty of the proposed method that we have considered so here i have just uh, given a comparison you can see in the existing methods so you need a very large training data okay so you need a very large training data in terms of the charging and discharging here in the proposed method we have used some initial 400 cycles of data okay initial 400 cycles of data uh, to, to gather that so we need around 45 days okay to gather that data and which will be required for training okay now that initial 400 cycles of data here uh, the state of health can be actually can reach from 100 percent to around 96 percent okay but not beyond that even if you like you want to like proceed further you want to go like below 96 percent of state of health then actually the number of cycle data that it will increase okay it will not be 400 but here with limited amount of information we are like we are trying to show you that how it is possible to estimate the battery state of health okay accurately so here you see that we need complete charge exchanging data here partial charging data of around 10 to 20 minutes okay so in our uh, case study we have used around 15 minutes of data but typically 10 to 20 minutes of data is sufficient now uh, special kinds of probe signals are also necessary in the existing methods which are there in the literature here existing partial charge data is sufficient here uh, cycle number information is required here it may or may not be required so differential voltage based feature vector we have defined okay which will be used to actually as an input to the neural network framework okay 
now here uh, the battery models like battery models with model parameters are needed here we just need because this is actually uh, like a data driven method so where we need one time training okay based on the uh, data of 400 cycles what actually we have gathered and this mostly talks about offline estimation here we can talk about like we can actually achieve online estimation okay so connection is still connection is incorrect it will come it will restore okay. Restore and connection. So you can start. Okay, so here uh, what actually I was saying that next slide. So this is these are the novel features. So already I spoke about this. So we can actually use 15 minutes of uh, partial charge discharge data, uh, and that is actually sufficient in our case to estimate the state of health of the battery in online. Okay, and here we have used a differential voltage-based feature vector. Okay, so that will help you to estimate the state of health. And this is actually needed. This 400 cycles of data is needed for offline training. Okay, so once it is offline trained, that neural network actually can help you to give the SOH estimate based on only 10 to 15, uh, 10 to 20 minutes of duration data. Okay, so that framework I will show you. That time it will be more clear. Now, uh, here for the training and testing purpose, we have used like batteries of two different capac capacities. One is called a type 1 battery, one is called type 2 battery. So type 1 battery is having a 3 ampere hour battery capacity, that is 3000 mAh. And for testing purpose, we have used 3500, like we have also used uh, testing on, like we have done testing on 3000 mAh battery, also on 3500 mAh battery. And this, uh, so so that I will test, that results I will show you at the end. So in this case, we have used similar electrochemistry, okay. But even if you, similar electrochemistry means the cathode material for both type 1 and type 2 batteries, they are actually same, okay. But even if you change the electrochemistry, this method whichever actually has been proposed, it is still applicable. What actually we need to do is that we just need the initial 400 cycles of training. If, if you do that initial 400 cycles of training with the new kind of electrochem electrochemistry battery, again, you can actually follow whatever method has been proposed here. Okay, so now how actually the feature vectors has been framed, that actually I'll explain here. You can see that this is actually a circuit model of a battery, which is, which is typically known as equivalent circuit. Okay. So here the parameters has been defined. So here, this is actually called a open circuit voltage. This is the battery terminal voltage, which you measure across two terminals of the battery, plus minus terminals. Here, this is a resistance, which is RF, which is the internal resistance. This is a, in, this is a resistance which has been considered here. Okay, typically like for our study, we have in, like introduced it which is called the AC layer resistance, okay? The resistance which is formed due to the accumulation of the AC layer, okay? Now, if we, if we consider that the voltage across these terminals, it is V, and from this point to this point, it is VACI. So we can actually write the VACI equation like this. VACI is basically V minus RF times I, okay? This I is this current. 
and this is actually the equation so these are these are all written in discrete time okay so you can see this k is basically the time index so state of charge at kth instant it is it depends on the state of charge at the k minus 1th instant plus the increment that we get here okay so this is current times the sampling time okay so at what sampling rate it has been gathered divided by the c max which is the max capacity okay and this will like if if you actually want to uh, find out the state of charge for k plus 1th instant that will be state of charge at kth instant plus this uh, we actually need information of the previous soc and the current like present value of the current okay that will give you the uh, state of charge value of the present instant okay and this popularly in the literature it is known as the coulomb counting mechanism okay coulomb is actually the unit of charge okay so you can see here it it is actually accumulating charge i into t okay so that's why the name coulomb counting okay now this aci actually when the battery is new that time actually the resistance of the aci layer that is that is completely zero now as the battery you are using repeatedly charging and discharging is happening then actually the aci layer will form and because of that there will be change in the resistance okay of the aci layer so here this aci resistance it is actually variable and this is fixed this rf is fixed okay so that's why i have written here this is the fixed internal resistance of the battery which does not change with aging okay but delta r aci is the increase in the internal resistance due to the increase in the thickness of the solid electrolyte interface layer okay so that part is the variable part now how to actually first find out the fixed value of the resistance okay because resistance cannot be measured so you have to find out from the information of voltage and current by ohm's law okay so here one test profile has been shown here so this is the suppose this is actually a discharging current so this this is the current you can see below zero so below zero it is negative that means actually it is discharging okay above zero it is positive current means it is for charging okay now here when the current is negative now at this point discharging has been stopped okay so that that's why the point is noted here as end of discharge okay now end of discharge point the corresponding voltage if you note this is this voltage this is here veod that is end of discharge now what happens that if you stop the discharging process so due to the chemical equilibrium of the battery so there will be a relaxation okay because of that relaxation this voltage automatically it will rise to this zero okay so that is this is zero amperes here until actually you if you again charge the battery so this is the charging phase so here i am not talking about the charging phase i am just saying that how to calculate rf okay so here from this point to this point this is actually the start of rest so from this point to this point it is the resting phase okay no charging and discharging is happening so after relaxation this this from this point to this point the voltage has risen from here, this point to this point okay this is blue one is the voltage graph so now change in the voltage because of the transition here in the current value that will give you the fixed value of the resistance that has been considered here in the circuit that is rf okay now here the capacity calculation has been shown here how it is done it is basically equal to this ts times this summation of the this this ib is actually the probe cycle current okay so probe cycle i have already explained in the previous slide it is actually uh, one fifth of the rated current so that's why it is written as 0.2 c rate so that means typically it is c by 5 okay so if the rated current is x ampere amperes here it is x by 5 okay so that's why it is 0.2 c rate so if you actually and this is actually written for discharging phase okay so from discharging phase we can compute the capacity okay so this is the summation on the discharging phase so this probe cycle current into the into the uh, sampling time that will give you the capacity and negative sign has been kept here because because this is the discharging current and iv will have a negative sign okay that negative sign and this negative sign will counter okay so it will cancel so that's why this and this capacity whatever has been computed here it will be used 
to compute the target state of health. There are basically two state of health that we will define here. One is the estimate of state of health, which will come from a neural network model. And this is actually the target state of health, which is acting like a reference. Okay. Now, if you see, like these are some typical graphs that I have shown you in order to see how the aging mechanism happens. So this is actually the voltage, battery voltage versus state of charge plots at different aging, aging cycles okay, or aging, aging stages. So here, this is the terminal voltage. This is the state of charge. So state of charge, uh, you can see that when it is cycle number one, okay, when it is the having the maximum state of health, okay, that time this voltage graph you can see it will actually reach the maximum value of the voltage of the battery at around uh, around 80 88 percent of the state of charge okay now when you see the cycle number 250 that corresponding data this is the red one so you see that uh, it has shifted to the left side now if you go further to cycle number 500 so these are see th this is actually all based on experiments okay so so you will see if you do an experiment on this so you will observe this kind of characteristics so cycle number 500 it has again further shifted cycle number 750 it has again shifted okay so gradually there is a shrink in the along the y axis you can see so this way from this point to this point this is actually the effect of aging okay gradually you can observe that the terminal voltage reaches the max value at a lower state of charge okay as the battery has aged because at this point the battery is the most aged one that is at thousand cycle here the state of health is the lowest here the state of health is the maximum okay so similar thing you will also notice if you actually see the variation of the VACI voltage versus the state of charge. Okay, so similar trend has been observed here also. This V, th this is actually the terminal voltage here. Here, that was the plot, first plot, and this is actually corresponds to the second plot. Okay, which has been shown here. So similar trend you can notice here also that shrink in the uh, x direction. Okay, so due to the aging factor. Now, uh, here, how the features has been computed that I'll show you uh, that is needed to train the neural network model. So here, the VACI voltage, uh, we, we, we have computed based on the circuit model and the incremental change in the VACI voltage that has been computed here. Okay, And the target SOH computation is based on the probe cycle current. So here, the capacity, it comes due to the probe cycle current and that is the ratio uh, with respect to the maximum capacity into 100 percent okay that will give you the target state of health which is which is treated here as the reference value okay and here the coulomb count computation between two successive points has been shown here this is this delta qc it is basically denotes the loss in the capacity okay capacity loss that will happen like uh like what we have considered here is this is the c max this is the max capacity to with every 1.5 percent like 1.5 percent uh, reduction of the max capacity so there will be that we have treated as the intervals as delta qc okay and because of that whatever change we notice in the delta vsi so that that has been considered here okay and the feature vector has been formed in such a way that delta vsa points has been used here along with the temperature average okay so this uh, 10 feature feature uh, like parameters has been used here in the feature vector and that will be given as input to the neural network model okay so here you can see this is these are the two graphs like this is vaci versus state of charge this is delta vaci versus state of health okay so here you can see that the this is actually the q loss that i was talking about delta q loss that is the shrink uh, in the along the x-axis and the shrink uh, so so here you can also notice the change in the delta vaci based on the delta vaci points okay and here it has been observed that the delta vaci at so this is actually corresponding to the first first point 
here the aging is the most okay here the aging is less here it is moderate here it is the maximum okay so due to the aging effect delta vsa variation how it happens with like state of health so that has been shown here okay now uh, this is the normal charging discharging protocol okay so that has been followed here so here you can see that this is the constant current charging like uh, how many different kinds of charging rate has been considered in our study that has been shown here uh, sometimes 0.8 c 1 c 1.2 c has been considered and constant voltage charging at 4.4 volt which is the max voltage of the battery and here uh, discharge has been uh, done at constant current of 1 c 1.2 c like that okay and uh, the probe cycle what actually we have considered here is every 50 to or or every 125 cycles okay so with cccv charging discharge at 0.2 c rate 0.2 c rate corresponds to the constant current mode okay so here the in the constant current phase the current that has been considered is 0.2 c that is c by 5 okay so this is the protocol that has been followed here okay so to to actually generate the uh, data now uh, in this so here the SOH estimation, so this is the framework, like this is actually not the framework, this is the metric, I would say. So the absolute error that has been defined here, okay. Uh, here, this is the target state of health that is computed based on the probe cycle current. This is the estimated state of health which has been computed based on, like which is coming from the neural network model, okay. So the error between this will give us the error, okay. And this is basically a relative error and sometimes the state of health estimated can be greater than state of health target okay or vice versa okay because of that modulus has been kept okay like this so now you see that this is actually the framework of the neural network so here these are the input layers these are the hidden layers and this is the output layer so training of the artificial neural network use the feature vectors and the target values so feature vectors i have already shown you in the x what are the components and the target values is the target value is the sh value okay now here the delta vsi delta vsi2 till so here in the generic way it has been written but here it is basically uh, we have considered up to nine points and this is the average temperature okay that will be used here for uh, and 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 actually here the number of input nodes has been considered as 10 because there are 10 feature points and one output node and there are 100 nodes in the hidden layer okay so what has been shown here now uh, these are the like uh, this is actually how the like different types of batteries has been considered like type 1 type 2 i have shown you that here the number of batteries used in case of type 1 corresponding to like when the charging rate has been considered as 0.8 C and the temperature like this is actually, there is a thermal chamber which uh, where the temperature uh, like has been maintained sometimes it is maintained at 25 degrees sometimes it has been maintained at 45 degree so at for different test cases that ha this has been shown here so type 1 type 2 like this okay so this is just a tabular information now what happens that so this coming before coming to this I'll just show you uh, I'll just tell you one thing that as we have calculated, like as we have uh, initially for offline training purpose, we have actually calculated, like we have uh, collected 400 cycles of data. And typically that 400 cycles of data came from the range state of health from 100% to 96%. Now, with that, we cannot complete the full offline training. So if we have to go beyond uh, the full full range of SOH till say zero percent okay for that actually we need to extrapolate further okay either we need full hundred say hundred to zero percent of SOH data or if we don't have if we have only the partial information we need to extrapolate beyond that beyond 96 percent of SOH okay so for extrapolation purpose one electrochemical battery model has been used here okay so this these are actually the parameters like the various electrochemical properties of, of the battery which actually can be used in an electrochemical model so various like parameters are there like uh, because there are cathode anode 
so we need the interfacial area okay this is the anode corresponding to anode so this n actually corresponds to anode okay if it is p that will correspond to cathode okay so the side reaction exchange current density is required area of the anode is required length like thickness of the anode it is required this is the cycle time this is the charge transfer coefficients these are actually required and some universal constant like faraday constant it is required okay and there are like other this is actually charge transfer resistance which depends on the universal gas constant this is the temperature this is the faraday constant and the alpha p alpha n alpha alpha p and alpha n actually these are these are the coefficients okay and uh, and also the like acl layer thickness okay so as the acl layer gradually grows with time what happens the thickness will gradually increase so that thickness is actually denoted as the delta aci okay and the aci layer resistance that is r aci it will actually depend on the delta aci okay so that i will show you in the next slide so these are these are some other set of parameters which are there in the electrochemical battery model where we need the open circuit voltage like this is the open circuit potential of the anode okay so open circuit voltage corresponding to the anode cathode everything is required okay and there are like these are the solid particle lithium concentration in both the uh, electrodes okay so which is shown here there is particle radius okay that is that is shown here average aci layer over potential at equilibrium stage that is actually shown here okay so no need to actually understand uh, much about this because these are actually very like you need to have clear understanding of all these electrochemical parameters otherwise it is difficult to understand okay so i am just i have just shown you because the model that has been considered to extrapolate beyond 400 cycles for that purpose this electrochemical model has been used that's why i am showing you this okay and also aci layer density this uh, aci ionic conductivity all these things are required okay now here the extrapolation of the voltage curve it actually happens according to this equation okay so that's why it is written here based on the extrapolation process of the charging voltage curves for the complete life span of the battery using the information from the initial 400 cycles so initial 400 cycle data is corresponding to from soh 100% to 96% but beyond 96% of soh how to get that actually has been done by extrapolation of the voltage curves okay for that this is actually the equation corresponding to the capacity loss which actually depends on various various parameters that has been already i have shown here in the previous slides this is actually the raci resistance that is the resistance of the aci layer okay that depends on the initial raci resistance plus the delta aci that is the thickness and the kappa this is the ionic conductivity okay so this will grow as the aci layer uh, thickness grows and accordingly the resistance will increase okay so and delta aci actually it can be represented like this so now delta aci and the q loss how they are related that has been shown here like you see that this big term here it actually is there also in the q loss so if i just substitute so ultimately we can actually arrive at this equation okay that is how q loss is basically affecting the change in the thickness of the ac layer okay so this happens due to like and this is this is there there are certain fact like parameters which has been used here and r aci calculations actually will involve this aci delta aci that that we have computed here that has been substituted here okay so which will give us the r aci okay so i hope that like logically i am telling you so now so this is this is what actually happening step by step okay now here uh, what happens that how the aci layer resistance versus cycle number that has been framed okay so if we consider that the increase in the aci layer resistance is denoted as delta r aci from cycle number j1 to j2 where actually j2 is like j1 is at a later later time instant okay like that's why j2 is actually greater than j1 okay so now uh, here the delta raci j2 comma j1 it actually can be written like this pc times the delta q loss okay so where this this equation is coming from here okay from here so the change in the raci resistance 
and the change in the capacity loss they are basically related like this okay where pc has been like uh, denoted as a lumped parameter which has all the parameters of the electrochemical model okay now the delta rsei j2 comma j1 it is basically the difference between rsei j2 j2th cycle minus the rsei corresponding to the j1th cycle okay so corresponding so so accordingly the delta q loss can also be computed like this okay so here like why actually this has been used as a lumped parameter that i will actually show you in the upcoming slide because actually see this electrochemical battery model it is a very challenging one to realize in practice and also like for uh, like if you have to get all these parameters whichever has been shown here you need to do rigorous laboratory testing there are actually different kinds of tests available which is one is called uh, scanning electron microscopy one is called uh, xrd and also half cell analysis because like after doing that only you can get these parameters and also sometimes it may not be possible to get all the parameters even in the literature also you will not get all such parameters okay so if you just like think that all the effect is there inside pc so we have tried to frame it in a in such a way that we will first like we have tried to frame it in a least square kind of a framework okay so that is a very popular method which is called the method of least squares okay for parameter identification so here you see that this pc hat hat denotes estimate okay that is actually defined in such a way that it is actually the solution of a least squares problem okay so that's why pc evaluation is done based on the least squares so this equation actually is coming from the previous one if you see here from here only it, it is coming you just you just rewrite you just take the q transpose okay q transpose inverse and q transpose is there so if you just cancel this you will actually get back to the this equation okay. we have just tried to re rewrite by introducing a q, q transpose and to write so we have used the least squares framework so that actually it has been written in this way q transpose q whole inverse q transpose r okay that will give you the estimate of pc where the so these are actually written in bold face delta q loss and delta r is and delta q loss will have all this uh, all this like values delta q loss 50 comma 0 100 comma 0 so 50 comma 0 actually is like defined like this like delta rci will have all this so this is actually the internal resistance at 50th cycle minus the internal resistance at 0th cycle that difference will give you the delta rci at uh, at like uh, 50 comma 0 okay so similarly the q loss is also defined in in the similar way okay so now uh, the r ri 50 here it is basically the fixed resistance so ri actually denotes the internal resistance that actually is a sum of the the fixed resistance and the ac layer resistance that is the change which is happening okay rf is basically here rac is zero which is typically zero when the battery is at new condition and when no charging and discharging has been done okay and some other fixed resistances that's why actually it has been used as a fixed parameter always okay and here it has been shown that ri versus state of health so measured quantities has been shown here and the fit okay so fits has been shown here with two different uh, colors here actually the vaci versus the state of charge uh, variation has been shown and for different state of health levels okay so here you see that at this point the state of health is 98.6 percent okay and here after it is fitted it is actually corresponding to this okay this is the, having the maximum state of health now when the state of health has reduced to 96 percent this has shifted okay so there is a shift here this orange one when it has again further shifted due to the reduction of the state of health of to 94 percent it has further shifted to the left side okay so you can see there is a shrink in the in the graphs and when it has reached to 91 percent it has further shrinked to the left side okay so this is happening due to the aging mechanism okay and in all this fit so because there is a there is a uh, reference value and there is a measure measurement like there is actually measured value and there is a fit so the fit will have like how much actually it is like will be the correlation so that has been 
computed and it has been shown that in all these cases the correlation coefficient between the measured and the fitted values for decreasing state of health it was actually like this okay. all are actually very close to one okay so here these are the steps which has been followed okay so all these steps has been used here to get the get the uh, soh computations so that i'll just show you like i'll just explain this step by step this is the open circuit voltage which is basically the vaci voltage minus the delta raci times the current okay now delta VC, vaci how to compute this is actually the measured voltage minus the fixed resistance into the current now since uh, in order to compute the the delta the vaci voltage uh, we have actually subtracted rf times i from this vk so it is basically now independent of the charging rate okay so it is independent of the of the c rate of the current whatever current may be it doesn't matter actually okay so ocv calculation has been actually done according to this relation after that so the open circuit voltage and the battery state of charge they actually share a relation between them that relation has been established in in step number two which is actually based on a lookup table relation okay lookup table means for this ocv this is the state of charge for this ocv this is the state of charge that is actually just just one to one mapping okay so if you just form so this is a this is a general relation that has been written here it is called a polynomial fit and this has been written for nth order now it depends on the it depends on the type of data that you have whether the n will be 4 or 3 that that de depends okay so this is usually an all linear relationship okay so in the generic way it has been written according to the step 2 and this uh, that 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 will actually come from the fit if you have open circuit voltage value and if you have the state of charge so you have 100 such values of open circuit voltage VOCV and 100 values of state of charge. If you actually fit, so in MATLAB car fitting toolbox, if you do this A0, A1, A2, all actually it will give. Okay, And that is fitted in the least square sense. Okay, it, it will give you. Now you see that in the step number three, little modification has been done in this above equation, which has been written in step number two. What is the modification? Because here, this is the relation between open circuit voltage and state of charge. Okay. Now you see that state of health is a very important factor. Now, when actually the battery is in new condition, that time, suppose you establish the relation between VOCV and SOC as per the step number two. Now, what if actually the battery has aged, maybe after 100 cycles, this relation may not hold, right? So how actually then it will be modified? Okay, maybe at SOH at 50%, this this relation may not hold okay so in order to generalize that so what actually we have done in step number three that at x percent soh there is a slight modification here you see now if x is 100 this will give you this step two okay if s is if x is 50 that corresponds to 50 percent switch if x is uh, 10 that corresponds to 10 percent switch okay accordingly the state of charge and the open circuit voltage relation can be modified okay as per the step number three now step number four it is actually the aci voltage equal to ocv voltage so based on this we are writing okay based on this first equation this is aci voltage equal to ocv voltage plus the delta raci times current now all this voltage like all this vaci vocv delta raci they are all function of state of health except the current current is not function of state of health okay that's why current is written as it is like this and here the delta raci at x percent sh it is actually written like this based on the previous relation delta raci equal to pc times delta q loss okay so delta raci at x percent sh it is pc hat times delta q loss at x percent sh okay so now delta q loss at x percent sh it is actually defined like this now delta q loss is basically the loss in the capacity and that is actually defined in terms of the max capacity okay now you see that when x is when x is x percent x percent sh that means when x is say zero then then what will happen the q loss is 100 percent okay 
when the state of health has actually gone to zero, the loss is 100%. But when the uh, this is uh, when the x is 100%, that means state of health is the maximum. That time, that time, what will happen? The Q loss is zero. Okay. So accordingly, it has been framed. Okay. Now, this is the framework that actually I want to uh, tell you that this is actually there are two frameworks that can be possible. One depends on like if you have the complete lifespan of the battery data available to you and in another case if the complete lifespan of the data is not available to you okay suppose if you if you think that the complete battery data complete complete lifespan battery data is available to you so here this is actually the part of the offline training where current voltage temperature data of the full life cycle of the battery is already you have you are actually generating the feature vectors and the target vectors based on this and then you are training the neural network model okay now the model has been trained now this is actually the offline part okay now in the online part what you are doing this is cycle wise online SOH estimation here current voltage temperature data from partial charge discharging like as I said that 10 to 15 minutes that much data you have that you will actually use to generate the feature vector and that information you will give here and the trained model the trained neural network model will give you the soh estimate okay based on whatever information it gets now okay because this neural network model is already trained based on based on this offline training okay whichever offline data you have now this this part is online okay so like, like already so if you have to make the neural network work, so first of all, you have to train it. Otherwise, actually, it will not work. Okay, so now next part, actually, what will happen? Like what we have uh, proposed here. This is actually when the complete lifespan of battery data is not available to us. Okay, here the current voltage temperature data of 400 cycles is given. Now, extrapolation of the battery voltage curves for complete lifespan of the battery is done based on the electrochemical model okay in the previous case electrochemical model was not used because we had the full range of data okay here we don't have the full range of data we have data of 400 cycles initial 400 cycles that is from 100 to 96 percent but beyond that we don't have so if we have to do it with limited information then actually we need some extrapolation that extrapolation is done here using the electrochemical model that has been shown previously and then actually the feature vectors and target vectors has been computed accordingly then the neural network model has been trained okay then same way actually the online estimation is happening like you have around 10 15 minutes of data here that will generate the feature vector and that you will feed to the neural network model that will give you the state of health okay that is the estimated value okay so these two schemes i have actually explained here now some uh, results whatever we have uh, got till now that actually i am showing you that this is actually the state of health uh, graphs so this is the when the chamber chamber temperature that is the ambient temperature is 45 degree and here it is 25 degree in both the cases you can see target soh and the estimated soh they are very pretty much close to each other okay based on the proposed method here actually this is when the chamber temperature is 45 degree and chamber temperature is 25 degree but keeping the charging rate constant okay so it is actually not very 0.8c here also it is 0.8c here also they are pretty much close okay another case you see here that when the chamber temperature is maintained constant but the charging rate has changed this is 1.2c this is 1c this time also the results that we have obtained it is quite satisfactory okay here what is happening that here the charging so so this is actually the here also it is 0.8c here 45 degree and here it is 25 degree charging rate is constant and temperature is varying so here you can see that they are pretty much close to each other okay so target SOH and the estimated SOH they have been compared here so here this is actually a bar plot which actually uh, in order to show all cases like except few cases like one or two cases like here the error is bit high so here this is actually denotes the max like mean absolute error this is the standard deviation this is the maximum error okay so 
so mean absolute error and maximum error they have been represented in terms of percentage so here you see that all types of batteries type 1 type 2 and various conditions they get dif different rates of charging temperature that has been shown here and in majority of the cases we have we have actually achieved mean absolute error less than 1% okay and the standard deviation was uh, below 0.7 and you can see that one one or two isolated cases are there where, where it is actually the error is a bit high okay okay so this is actually the summary of my presentation whatever i have shown you that the online solution has been developed to solve the practical problem of estimating SOEs and that too by using the partial charging data and 15 minutes of normal charging data has been used to estimate the state of health based on the training that has been already done okay offline and here uh, so because it this this will collect current voltage information from the existing bms so it can be also integrated in existing bms which are which are readily available in the market and it is for training purpose we need only 400 cycles of data and 400 cycles of data if you have to generate we need around 45 roughly 45 days of time okay now this uh, battery like like whatever we have used here for testing and training they have they have the same electrochemistry now if you change the electrochemistry to say for this uh, battery was lithium cobalt oxide if you change it to lithium iron phosphate same method is applicable only thing what you have to do is that you need this 400 cycle of data so you you have to first gather in order to do that you just need 45 days of uh, time in order to gather this 400 initial cycles of data okay and that will again like like this uh, method whichever has been proposed here you can again reapply there okay and here we have tested it and as, as i said that we have achieved mean absolute error less than one percent and uh, here we have shown that like so there is actually the first cycle internal resistance is needed okay so what happened in our case like the vaci that that has been shown here vaci versus uh, state of uh, like state of charge one graph i have shown you first point actually we have picked maybe if the state of uh, charge is around 60 to 80 percent so we have chosen a vaci that is around 3.68 volts only that voltage one first time we need after that we'll just uh, like compute based on whatever method i have shown here okay so and this is actually this method which is applicable for various kinds of applications like smartphone electric vehicle it, it is applicable to in all cases okay and some key references we have given uh, here okay so that's all from my side if you have any question you can ask How many samples uh, in this case, like if you if you actually choose the sampling rate, like if it is let's say every 0.1 seconds, so that much data you have to like, like full charge and discharging is happening, okay, for 400 cycles. And depending on the sampling rate, what you have fixed, that much data you will have. Uh, so here we have taken around 10 seconds, around 10 seconds we have actually done the sampling and we have taken the data. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, actually, if you have 400 cycles of data, after that, you have to extrapolate the whole voltage curve based on the electrochemical model. If all the data is not available to you, if. No, 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 that model that I have shown you, that electrochemical model, that Q loss. RACI, Delta SEI, okay, so that will actually give you, like, that will actually help you to, like, prolong or extend the charging voltage graph from 96% SOH to further, okay, which you are not having. And that is necessary if you want to do the offline training. Otherwise, you will, like, your neural network will not be trained. It will only be trained with, if you, if you train only with the 400 cycles of data without extrapolating further using the electrochemical model 
problem is that neural network model will be trained only from 100% SOEs to 96%. Beyond 96%, what will happen? It will not be able to like give you the correct prediction. Any more questions? Simplest method. See, there are actually various methods uh, which are which are there in the literature. So here I have presented one data-driven method uh, by using the neural network. So other other kinds of like uh, machine learning tools also you can use. Like there are regression methods like support vector regressions and also Gaussian process regression that can be also done. If you go for model based approaches, there are actually uh, various filters or one of the popular filter is Kalman filter is there and uh, extended version of those filters are also there. Extended Kalman filters, unscented Kalman filters are also there. That will be model based okay? where you need complete state space model of the battery. Here actually we are not using any model for estimating the state of health. Okay. Here only it is based on data. Okay, that's why neural network. Neural network is trained with the features that has been already pre-computed. Okay, based on the data, some features we have taken. Okay, now you can change the feature. Like if you change the feature, this kind of method you can propose. Okay, we have actually taken the ACI layer uh, voltage differences as the differential voltages as the features along with the temperature, average temperature. Actual experimentation, like here, see, whenever if whenever actually you are applying a machine learning tool, so before that you need to train it properly. Okay, for training purpose, we have generated the training data. And online, actually, online method, like in real time, how it will happen, that will depend on the only the 10-15 minutes data that we have gathered. Okay. So as I said, that even if you change the battery electrochemistry in this case, if you move from lithium cobalt oxide to something else, maybe NCA type or maybe uh, lithium iron phosphate, which is called LFP. That case also it is applicable. Only as I said that you need to retrain the like model using that data. One set of data you have to just generate and retrain it. Uh, which one you are saying? Uh, can you can you can you just say from? Okay, just a second. No, no. This one. This is actually just for. This is actually just for explaining you. It is not like eight hundred minutes. It is not. This I just wanted to uh, explain that what actually is a probe cycle and what is a normal charge discharge cycle. Just for your explanation purpose, I have kept this figure. Okay, it is actually it is not coming from any like it is not a result. It is just for explaining purpose. Okay. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> Actually, there is no like as such there is no simplest method like that. But you can actually try with uh, model based approaches. Kalman filter can be used. There is another technique called particle filter that can be also used, which actually works on Bayesian method of learning. Like, like there you need a state space model, okay, where you have to define the battery states, like state of charge, voltages of the capacitances, all these things. And then actually you need a like that framework you need where you have to do the prediction where you have to do the correction all these things okay just like a observer structure state observer how it looks like okay according to that it is possible to do okay this is actually a data driven model okay 
like two different kinds of analysis we can do like one this is actually based on the only the data okay you actually don't have a like that so that's why this is like a black box model okay we don't have any like like model any any model structure okay like whatever model i have discussed here that is only for extrapolation purpose not for sh estimation the model that has been used here electrochemical model that is only for extrapolation purpose to generate the data to generate the offline data okay that's it but for estimation purpose no model based ap approach has been used here but you can actually do like then you need a state space model like based on the circuit that i have shown here you have to apply the kvl and you have to just write the voltage current equations okay differential equations you will get even actually if you can incorporate capacitances you can actually get differential equations that actually you can frame in a state space model that model actually used in a Kalman filter which actually can give you the estimate of state of charge state of health and whatever actually you want yes yes Yes, yes. RI is basically the sum of those two. RI is R F plus R S. Yes. Okay. So that's why that's why I have shown you. You see that. Uh, just a second. Yes. Here. So, any more question? Thank you, sir, for delivering such an informative speech. All of us are thankful to you very much, sir. Dear participants, we shall meet once again at 3 p.m. for the further session, final session. Thank you.